Good afternoon. It's almost two o'clock and I'm getting the sign that we should go getting started here soon. Ah, lights are really bright. You were right, lights are bright. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to Synergy. Hopefully everybody had good lunch. Um, don't know what lunch was. I was finishing my presentation, to be quite honest. So um, this session is about what we have learned um, in implementing um, Citrix Cloud apps and desktop services. So uh, before we start, hopefully, there you go. Um, if you guys are tweeting, um, those are the hashtags that, that we should use for this session um, in case you guys want to tweet anything out. A little bit about me. Um, so I said, my name is Eduardo Molina. I lead the end user computing practice at Round Tower. Uh, Round Tower is a um, Citrix partner out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, been in the United States since 2004 uh, as a customer. So I've, I've been uh, living in Citrix actually since the year 2000 with WinFrame and MetaFrame XP. Um, so I've seen the goods, the bats, and the uglies. Um, fellow CTP, oh, thank you. Some of the guys are here. Also, uh, you know, EUC champion from the from the VMware side of of the house. Um, so what are we going to talk about? Um, I want to I want to talk about what you're going to expect and what you're going to see. So if after we go through that, you don't really care about the session. You know, I'm sorry to see you go, but I, I want to make sure that everybody has the same expectations. We're going to do a very quick review on Citrix Cloud just to make sure that, that we're all on the same page and level set. Is anybody not seen, not touched Citrix Cloud before? OK, perfect. We're going to be talking about licensing, because that's one of the things that, as a consultant, we get asked the most when we're doing Citrix Cloud projects. So we're going to spend a few time, a few minutes on that. Then we're going to go over the use cases, actually real projects that we have done for customers. Um, we're not going to use the customer names, but you will see some of the designs are um, are actually, you know, copy paste of what we did or what we received from them. Um, and finally, what to be aware of. So things that do during our implementation, we saw, we fail, we fix. Right? I don't think there's anybody perfect, so it's okay to fail. Um, so, on that note, we're not going to see any Game of Thrones jokes here. I don't like the show. I've never seen a single episode, so that's not coming. It's the first thing that we're going to make sure. It's not a sales pitch. Um, so, so, we're not going to talk about pricing. We're not going to talk about features. We're not going to talk about, you know, if you should do it or not. Um, we're not going to... Um, you might not agree with what I'm saying. That's okay. We can talk after the, the presentation and try to understand why you don't agree with it. Um, we're sharing our experience. So your experience might be different if you have implemented it before. There are more than one way of doing things, and that's okay. There will be some technical topics, I would say at the 200 level, not anything bigger than that, uh, for the time that we have. Um, so with those expectations, I don't see anybody walking away. That's, that's pretty good. Um, so let's get started with a quick overview. So as you, as you know, we, we make the mistakes that we always say Citrix Cloud. But Citrix Cloud is not one thing, right? It's a combination of services. There are multiple services that make the platform. When I'm talking to, to our teams, we talk about the platform, the, the framework, because there are multiple things. Now, the most common known of those is what we call Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop Service, CVATS for short. Um, and the good thing is that with most of the services, you can pick where you put your workloads. And that's the other advantage that we have with the Citrix Cloud services. So for this presentation, we're going to completely focus on VATS and make sure that we understand the different components. Um, by the way, I'm using just standard pictures. I don't, wanna, I don't like spending time reinventing images. So those, you will, those that have been on Citrix websites or Dan Feller websites, you will see a lot of those pictures as well. Um, so fr fr from that perspective, right, Citrix is dividing things into what they manage, and I'm saying manage with air quotes because not everything is managed. Um, it's hosted by them. It has some level of management, but there's still a lot of management that will be our management, that we are responsible for. So um, on the top part is what Citrix is managed. So it, it makes, you know, we make sure that all these things are managed by Citrix, the part that is not managed by Citrix is still my responsibility to create the delivery groups on the console. Still my, my responsibility to the machine, the policies, 
That, that is sits on the control plane, but it's still my responsibility to go through that. Now the bottom part, what we call the resource location, is where my resources are running. And we're gonna go, when we go through the use cases, we're gonna go different scenarios that we have used for customers. Now, as you can see on the top part, there is a workspace configuration, there are gateways, there are storefronts, but some of those components, depending on your needs, and we'll go over that, might be in the bottom section. Um, and <clears throat> there will be pros and cons of doing that, of moving things that are cloud that will now move in it to on-premises. But there are requirements for that. So just to make sure, we have the control plane that is hosted by Citrix, managed by Citrix, but we still have responsibilities on. And then there is the, the resource location that we're completely responsible for. Um, that Citrix will not have any responsibility. So licensing. As on every vendor out there, manufacturer out there, there is bundles, right? You go to Burger King and you ask for combo one or two or three. There's, there's no difference here. When we talk about workspaces, there's three type of workspaces. And depending what, which ones you pick, that's the features you get. So the biggest workspace is the Workspace Premium Plus. That gives you everything. You know, it gives you the access control layer, the endpoint management, the content collaboration, and the one that probably we, we ask the most is the uh, virtual apps and desktops. If you guys are customers that are, have concurrent licensing, the only way that you can move or transition to Citrix Cloud is by getting Premium Plus. And that's, that's one of the things that, that you know, we have given some advice to Citrix about how difficult it might be, because you might be a Sen, um, sorry, not Senap, a virtual apps <laughs> um, company, a premium uh, virtual apps company. You don't have Send Desktop, you don't have share file. And if you want to go and continue to have, you, you might be on healthcare, you might be on education, and you want to go and continue with your concurrent licensing, you're going to have to get everything. Now, you don't have to use it, but you like it or not, you might be paying for it. Um, workspace standard is just the control plane for access control. So very simple, very single sign-on, Octa-like. Um, and then the workspace premium extends and gives you endpoint management and content and collaboration, aka share file. So we go from, from just single sign-on, single URL for web apps and, 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 and SaaS, and cont uh, content and collaboration file management. If you look at you know, this um, table, you know, there are, there, there's where you see that the virtual apps and desktop is all the way at the bottom. So that's the only combo that, or, or suite that will give you that. Now, this virtual apps and desktops, you can get it by itself. You don't have to get a workspace premium or workspace standard um, type of bundle to get um, apps and desktops. The one thing that I do like a lot about the Citrix Cloud is the license management that they have provided. So this is a screenshot of the Citrix um, control plane when you go and you look into the licensing utilization. So one of our customers, they have 8,000 licenses. They have assigned up to or around 5,000 licenses, unique users, right? Because the, when you go with, with virtual apps and desktops, it's name user name device user. Um, it tells you also the last, on a monthly basis, how many of those have been unique, and it tells you on a daily basis how many of those are unique, which also help us to understand what are my trends in the licensing utilization. So it's a lot simpler that on-premises today, it's a lot easier to go to our management and tell Mr. CIO, we're reaching our limit, we're gonna need more because we're giving the tools to show them. As you can see, this is a live example for one of our, from our, one of our customers that we start working on a full production implementation, and you can see how they're ramping up. And then you can also see that you know, in February, where we get most of the users, there was a, a very nice split between regular users and new users, but, but, but as we have been finishing with implementation, the, the pink part is very steady, because you know, now the users are always there. Now, because it's name device, people is like, well, I can never use concurrent licensing. But the good thing that Citrix have done on this is you can actually click 
on um, release users. Did you see, um, at the bottom, right here, there's a release users. So if you click there, what Citrix will show you, the control plane is the users that have not logged in in 30 days. So you can go there and hit release licenses, and you're getting all those licenses immediately back. Now, if, if you're getting very, very short and your purchasing process is, is taking a long time, then you can probably go there and do it daily or do it you know, every so often, more than a monthly basis. So there is an easy way for now, for us now, to be able to add, remove licenses, but also release the licenses so new users come, you know, come and go, especially when we have you know, third-party contractors or project-based contractors that are gonna be here for three months and then they need to go. It's an easy way. For questions, we need to go to the microphone. Sorry, just a heads, a heads up, because we're recording the session. So can we wait until the end? Yeah, um, so we, we get all the questions on the microphone. I, would t I was told to say that. Right. Um, <clears throat> so some of the licenses notes that we have learned. If you go with something like Premium Plus, and you got 8,000 licenses of Premium Plus, you might think, OK, I'm going to give Synapse and some desktop, or virtual apps and desktop, sorry, doing this for too long, um, to 8,000 users. But for Citrix Endpoint Management, I'm going to give it to another different 8,000 users. The EULA actually says that, that all the components need to be used by the same 8,000 users. So if you have 16,000 users and eight and eight, so you're gonna have to still get 16,000 licenses. So make sure that's that. The, only, the other difference that is actually in our benefit as users is that, that 8,000 or 5,000 or 100 is a soft cap. So if you go over the licensing, you're gonna see a message on the console, you went over the license. If it happens once, that's it. If it happens more often, then your Citrix account team will, let, will be advised, hey, this customer is constantly going above, and then it's a conversation about how many more. But it's not that it's gonna be immediately you get cut off when you go to the 8001 or the 101. So it's a soft cap, it helps us. Um, I've been told that it's about a 10% soft cap, so the more licenses you have, the more, the more soft that cap is. Um, there are components of the services that will still remain to be in, on premises. So for micro VPN, for example, with Citrix Endpoint Management, you are entitled to a VPX 3000 that you put on premises to do the micro VPN. But that entitlement is just for Send Mobile or Citrix Endpoint Management. You cannot use that VPX to do a Citrix Gateway, for example. So just be aware of, of you cannot do double duty on those things. Um, from a, from a um, feature set, anything on Citrix Cloud is premium. So you don't have to worry about, do I get WEM? Do I get PVS? Can I use this feature? You're, you're entitled to all the features that you were buying on-premises, premium level licensing. Hybrid rights is something that Citrix is offering, which I think is a great offer. We might not be ready to go to Citrix Cloud tomorrow. We might not be ready to be in Citrix Cloud in a year but we know we wanna get there. So on your, ne or your next ma maintenance uh, renewal, you can actually go and you know, subscribe to Citrix Cloud with hybrid rights, and then for, for that period of time that will be defined on that contract, you can run things on premises, and you can run things on Citrix Cloud. Now, it doesn't mean that now you have 8,000 Citrix Cloud, 8,000 on premises, it's an, it's an all-inclusive, right? It's, you get 8,000 that can be distributed between the two environments. But that's, that's a pretty good. It also allows you to make a right sizing of the environment. On one of our customers, they had um, about 14,000 licenses between two companies that they were merging together. They, they, we went and we run some of the scripts to capture the data because they were all on premises. We discovered that they only needed about 10,000 licenses. So as part of their transition or trade up to the cloud, Citrix allows us to actually right size to the number of licenses that the, co the, the customer will need. So it's a great opportunity to, to get more or actually said, you know what, I don't need as many as I thought I was needing. So take advantage of that. And then for components like WEM or PVS or Citrix Hypervisor, if anybody's using Citrix Hypervisor, you still require a on-premises licensing server. So Citrix will cut you a special key that you will install on that on-premise licensing server to activate those components that will remain on-premises. <clears throat>
So that's a little bit about licensing. That, that's what we have um, discovered, what we have helped. So what use cases have we worked on? So the first use case was very interesting. We got a call from a customer, and they told us, they sent us this, they sent us this in an email. And they said, hey, I have an on-premises data center. Um, I'm building a second on-premises data center. I'm a setup user. I want you to sell me two net scalers and implement GSLB so I can have an automatic DR. A small customer, about 200 users. Um, so we went in and we talked to the customer and we asked them, you know, what's your situation from how many people manage the environment, what's your expertise. Um, their Citrix administrator was actually leaving the company. Um, so we, we said, you know what, what if we take this and instead of putting two net scalers with GSLB and, you know, GS, GSLB is a, great, it's a great, it's a great feature, but instead of, of doing that, why don't we go with Citrix Cloud? So what we did for them is we moved all the control pane because as you can see here, you know, they have 200 users. This is literally their environment. They have six setup servers. They had to have eight, um, um, eight management servers for six Citrix servers, Citrix setup servers. So that, that's, that's a lot of overhead. So we took away that overhead. We made it simpler for them to manage the environment we still kept the net scalers, and, and, and we kept it because they wanted a gateway, and we'll talk that, about the gateway in a little bit. But we were able to eliminate things like the web server on-premises, the database servers. We eliminated, obviously, the storefront and, and the controllers. So for smaller companies, for smaller organizations that might need a quick way, that just need looking for a DR, this is a perfect scenario. We, we, we were actually able to simplify their environment. The second scenario was a customer that called us, I'm on 2008R2, set up 6.5, I, I need you to help me with a statement of work to upgrade to 7.x. And we, we actually told them, why would you, why would you do that? Um, this company was a little bit bigger. Um, they, they obviously on the clock to get out of 2008 and out of 6.5. What we propose is, instead of having to upgrade your environment right now, create clones of your service right now, why don't we move your control plane again to the cloud and maintain everything on premises? And for 2008, it's as simple as just replacing the VDA. Let's remove the, the Citrix VDA 6.5, install the 7 that X that we can install in that environment, and now they're running on, on Citrix Cloud um, without the overhead that they had before. So it was a very easy way for them to upgrade. And then, as you know, this is what we show them. The scenario is in the future, they can easily add 2016, 2019 servers and migrate out of 2008 on a, on, on a step approach without having to worry about, you know, what else do I have to do in the management console? Um, this project was super fast. They were, they, were, they, were, they were very excited about that. And they saved a lot of money. Actually, the biggest saving is, was on the SQL cluster. They were running a SQL cluster um, and that was the biggest savings for them because they, they only had a SQL cluster because the high availability for, for uh, their setup environment. DR. Somebody came to us, you know, Round Tower is a big hardware partner as well, but somebody came to us and like, I, I, I need to have DR for my, you know, setups and desktop environment. Can you help me to figure out a way of not making it so expensive? Right? They have about 25 hosts in one day data center. They were wondering which other data center they were going to put things on. And you know, we went with the approach of, why don't you put things on the public cloud? You put the couple master images you have there, and you spin things up and down as you need them. You know, using things like CloudFormation and other automation tools that are available in public clouds is very simple to create images. MCS was, were perfectly fine on public clouds, so we were able to get them upgraded, get them a DR plan, and be able to test DR a lot faster. We're going to talk a little bit more of the design things that we, we, uh, we did with them in a little bit, but that was, there was another scenarios that we went with, just making your DR cheaper, making sure that you don't have dormant hardware, you know, getting, get, you know, getting dust that is not actually being used. The final and the most exciting one that we have done thus far is two companies merged together, and they said, we want to be cloud only. We want to get out of the data center. Um, but we're not ready to merge our domains. 
So one of the great features that we're able to do with Citrix Cloud is actually give them a single URL to log in and have multiple domains that they can pick from. And, but at the same time, have a single console where we can see both environments. And the environments were actually in two different clouds. So that, that story of hybrid or choices, it actually works. It, it, actually, it actually possible. My demo environment, I have Nutanix, I have AHV, I have um, um, AWS, Azure, and I have um, a VMware ESXi. Everything managed within the same console. Every single environment is single in a different domain. So it's actually doable. It's something that is, is not paperware. Um, so this was, this was very interesting. Uh, one thing that you guys have been seeing commonly here is that in order to, make, to, to, to talk to the control plane, you know, the cloud connectors are very important. And we're going to talk a little bit about the cloud connectors in, in the coming slides. So for use cases um, that have worked, um, this company, um, we know that's, that, that this company is where we take the screenshot out of the licensing utilization. It's been a, a very interesting project where we have learned, learned quite a bit. And what we have learned is what we're going to share on you know, what to be aware of. By default, Citrix Cloud can only give you a domain name that cloud.com. There is no way around that. So if you guys are looking to have your own domain or keeping your existing URL for your users, you know, we're going to have to do something different. We're going to have to go and have a storefront on-premises. We're going to have to have a Netscaler on-premises to accomplish that custom URL that you might be looking for. Um, we have challenged Citrix about why they don't allow us to have our own URLs. Um, and I think some of the um, answers we have got are quite valid. You know, how many organizations out there are willing to give somebody their SSL certificate with a private key so they can encrypt the sessions, right? That's, that's, I don't think that's going to fly. Um, but I know that they're working on something similar. The other challenge um, that you might have is, is multi-factor authentication. Depending who you use, if you use Radius or if you use native Okta or Ping or Duo, there are no uh, good ways today. We saw an announcement at the keynote that that's coming, that will be here, but there's still some things that we have to be aware of. Um, you will need, in this first rollout, an on-premises net scaler. So if you want to do radius-based authentication for two-factor authentication, you're still going to need a net scaler on-premises. If you don't want a net scaler on-premises and you want two-factor authentication and you're Azure all the way because you have Office 365, you might say, OK, I'm going to leverage Azure AD, not Azure AD DS, but Azure AD that comes with MFA, right? With Microsoft multi-factor authentication. And that's, that works really, really well. Now, be aware that because <clears throat> Azure AD will do things through SAML authentication, you're going to break single sign-on. So if you enable Azure AD with MF, because of MFA, and you click, after you log in, you click on the icon to open your application or open your desktop, you're going to be challenged to re-authenticate because that session is asking for a Kerberos NTLM type of ticket. So to combat that, then you now, if you want to use Azure AD and have single sign-on, then you're going to have to build an on-premises fast environment. So you know, it's a trade-off. Maybe it's the right approach for you. You know, smaller customers might not want to have anything because that's the, that's the promise of the cloud, right? I don't want to manage anything. Just give me a service. Um, bigger customers, that might be perfectly fine. But be aware that if, if you want to do multi-factor authentication, there are some considerations to make. Pick the right type of uh, a, um, Netscaler or ADC configuration. Which I mean by this is if you're using on-premises um, clustering for, for your Netscaler and you're moving your Netscaler to AWS or Azure, that feature is not available. So if you're trying to do things like, I don't want a single point of failure, you're going to do an HA pair. But you know, at any given point, you might have a single point of failure. And that's where it's important to keep more than on-premises to keep your net scalers up to date. Um, when you have the net scalers on-premises, you control the hypervisor. So you know that if there's something changing on the hypervisor, normally you'll be aware that it might or might not impact your net scaler. 
when you have Azure or AWS changing the order line services that Citrix might be relying on, you don't know if the version you have might have an impact. For example, if you're not on the latest and greatest version of, of the 11.1 Netscaler, the HA functionality is broken. We discovered that the hard way. We actually discovered we were normally doing testing. You know, every so often you test your HA uh, failure on, on, on AWS. One day we tested and it never happened. So be aware of, of you know, the changes that the underlying AWS, Azure, GCP are doing might have an impact. So it's important to be more up to date on the versions because as soon as Citrix realizes hey, there's a change coming, we're going to make a new version that will address those, those changes. <clears throat> if you're using storefront and Netscalers on premises, you are not using workspaces. So you're more in a traditional matter. So if because you need two-factor authentication and you need custom URLs, yes, you're using the VAT service, but you're not using the workspace service. You're not going to see the integration that you saw in the demos today, for example, where you have apps and files and other type of integrations. That is a cloud-only offering. So if you want those type of integrations, that intelligent workspace, you're going to have to move your storefront. You're going to have to move your ADCs to the cloud and use the gateway service. So those are some of the considerations. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry. Click too fast. When we talk about connectivity, there are three main types of connectivity on the Citrix Cloud um, service. The first one is the traditional gateway. That means that you're going to have a Netscaler on-premises. You're going to put an SSL certificate, and you're going to tell the service, go there for, for brokering my session. If you use the Netscaler, uh, the Netscaler gateway service, which works great, the problem is you only have one gig of throughput per user per month. So if your users are heavily uh, using heavily video or voice because they're a call center, that one gig of throughput per user per month might not be enough. You might chew through a gigabit of throughput in, in a week. Uh, we saw it in you know, eight, 10 days of, of a call center. If you're using you know, UDP or DTLS for, for traffic of your voice system. So you can get what they call um, bandwidth add-ons. So that's something you can negotiate with your contract when you, you subscribe into the service. Or if you're only using these guys internally, you might actually say, you know what, I don't need the gateway service. I'm going to do the internal only. And then the connection is direct between the end user and the Citrix Send app or Citrix uh, Send Desktop workstation. So that is uh, one, one really good feature. If you're, if you're using Citrix Cloud, if you go with any VDA that is 7.18 or newer, you're actually going to be able to, I'm going to butcher this word, so the re rendezvous option, which is enabled by default, which means that Citrix, if your, if your VDA server has access to the internet, will not tunnel the connection through your cloud connector. The session will start through the cloud connector, but as soon as it's established, then the end user will use the gateway service to talk directly to the, to the, to the VDA server. So that is a great feature. It helps a lot with the... Um, it helps a lot with bandwidth utilization, but be aware that your, your server will have to have internet connection, outbound internet connection. Also, if you guys are planning to deploy WEM and you're subscribing to the WEM service, not using on-premises WEM, your VDA will also need internet connection. Um, in our first implementation of the WEM service, we, we were trying and trying, and policies will not come down and will come down. We open a case. And you know, we discovered that was that our VDA servers didn't have internet connection. So be aware of using the WEM servers require the, ser the VDAs to have internet connection, which might be a problem for some highly secure environments. So be aware of that piece. Other things that we have learned, and, th and this I want to actually give a shout out to, m to my colleagues at Round Tower, because a lot of these things is, is things that they have had to work more than me. Um, and they have just, hey, Eduardo, did you know this? And you know, some of the things I didn't know. For example, if you are implementing on a, on, on a resource location on AWS and you delete the default VPC, MCS will not work. LCA, uh, MCS depends 100% on the default VPC to be there. Um, so our first implementation, we didn't have the default VPC because normally customers will delete that because you know, they, they, they're, they're very afraid of security. So we have to recreate a default VPC. 
the instance is very important. So I don't know if you guys are aware, but for example, AWS, the T2 instances, which are way cheaper, and when you're powering things up and down, makes the environment very affordable, they have the, what they call bursable credits, which means that they're, they're sharing that your price is because they're assuming that the server will get a 20% utilization constantly while it's powered up. When it's under that 20%, you start accumulating credits that when you go over the 20%, they start consuming. So the idea is that at the end, you're always consuming about 20%. What happened with one of our customers is when we did a POC, everything was good, but as we started having more and more users, they were, they were chewing through their bursable credits, and what does AWS do when, they, when you run out credits? It actually throws you down. So it will cut the CPU, it will cut the performance, it even cut the network bandwidth to that server. Um, so one of the things that we did with them is they still like the, the option to be up and down, a lot more flexible than other type of instances, but there is a checkbox that says, hey, if I go above my credits, just charge me. So be aware of the type of instances you're using. For example, we're, um, dedicated hosts are not supported by Citrix Cloud, but dedicated guests are. So that's one of the things that we have to look. Um, zones and delivery groups are your friends. On, on the examples that we show, and the very first use case where we have the two data centers, so we created two zones, obviously, one for each data center. We created a single delivery group with the name of the published application, and then use zone preference mode. We will tell, always go to my primary data center. Unless it's not available, then automatically goes to the second one. So that's an easy way to leverage zone and delivery groups to have an automatic failover for an application in case of a SENAP server outage. Obviously, there's more considerations if you have a full data center outage, but that's one thing that, that you want to leverage. On-premises images can actually be leveraged. AWS, GCP, um, um, Azure, they all give you tools that you can take a PVS image or a VHD or a VHDX and, com and convert it into their default instances. So you don't actually have to redo your master images if you don't want to, which is really, really good. It saves a lot of time. Now, be aware that you, if it's PVS, for example, you have to remove the PVS tools. If it's an ESX server, you have to remove the ESX tools as well. So, but you can actually take the exact same VM and just move it to the cloud and start testing rather quickly. We talk about cloud connectors and how important they are. Those, the, the cloud connectors are stateless. And Citrix, when you install the first cloud connector, immediately will show you a section that says, you, 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 we recommend you have at least two to be compliant because at being a stateless, Citrix actually will deploy software to the cloud connectors automatically without asking anything. So that's one thing that we will always tell our customers, always tell our change management and our monitoring teams, don't, don't worry if this cloud connector goes down, Citrix is probably applying something. But because it will happen at any time, if you only have two and Citrix does a update, then you're down to one. And if for any reason you're out of luck and Microsoft crashes, because Microsoft never crashes, then all your sessions might go down, depending on how you're doing the traffic. So we recommend always to implement at least three. So in case, because the, the update, sorry, the update to the cloud connectors is sequential. So Citrix will wait until the first one is completed to execute the second, to execute the third. So you, you're limiting your exposure there. Be aware that the SLA that Citrix will give you is 99.5%. So if you're one of those companies that are looking for a, you know, five nines of, of, of availability of, of, of HA, Citrix Cloud might not be the right option for you guys because you know, it's a 99.5. And in order to get that, you have to have a minimum of one year subscription and 100 users. So if you're under that, you're actually, you're never gonna be guaranteed an SLA. And, and if you read the fine print, the SLA, what it says is, we will give you a 10% of your bill as a credit. Um, that's the top that they will give you as an FYI. And then for automation, the remote SDK is there, it works. We, we, can, we can install it on our local computers and still use PowerShell scripts. The customer that we upgraded from, um, from um, 
2008 on 6.5, they had a bunch of SDKs. We converted those SDKs and we still be able to use for automation. So if, if you're migrating policies, if you're migrating things from on-premises to full cloud, you can use the SDKs to do extraction, to use the SDK to add things back into it, create delivery groups, create machine catalogs. That is all completely doable through SDK, so it's very important as, as you don't want to repeat the same clicking. I mean, at least I don't want to repeat it, the, same, the same clicking. Uh, we're getting down to um, the top of the hour, and I, think, I said I'm going to say about five minutes of, of time. So before you leave, um, I want to I wanna highlight you know, a few sessions that, that our friends CTPs will do. If you guys want to do like a really in-depth super session on, on, on how you do multi-sites, you know, the session 217, it's a 90-minute session, so be prepared, bring your caffeine, but that's a great session to go. Um, you're going to have a lot of great speakers, but it's, it's a long session. And if, you know, the, the session about best practices for, for apps and desktops as well, content collaboration. I think that that's one of the favorite products that we have seen in the share file and how you can leverage for Office 365. So those are some of the sessions that I would recommend you guys um, to add, especially the, the first one. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a great great session. Um, remember to finish the surveys um, before uh, May um, the 13th at 9 p.m. a.m. Sorry, and that uh, most of the sessions will be ready and on demand, and the powerpoints will be available uh, June 3rd. And finally, uh, remember to do the session uh, surveys. It does help us. Uh, it helps us to, to bring more sessions. It helps us to, to understand if you are like, so liking the sessions or not and help you to get points on, on the game. And with that, guys, I'm going to open it for the last eight minutes to questions. If not, that's all I have for you guys. I'll give you five minutes back on your day. Thank you very much. <laughs>